Hey guys, hope you're doing well and are excited to get back to learning about microeconomics. Let's continue with the topic of costs. So in the previous video, I described what an isoquant is, which is looking at the relationship between two inputs and how much output you can produce given any combination of those inputs. So we looked at the example of, you know, you're running a bakery and we talked about various costs uh, and go look at the video if you don't uh, remember the different costs we talked about. So in the next few videos, we are going to continue talking and, and explain to you a lot of ter terminology in relation to cost curves and different kinds of costs. So keep that example in mind because this chapter on producers and talking about specifically costs of producers can get a little bit technical and sometimes boring. Uh, so always keep this example in mind. And I'll try to keep coming back to this, this example. You know, the cost that we talked about here was the cost of electricity, the cost of inputs, which is flowers and egg, uh, the cost of hiring an extra worker, the cost of buying a coffee machine or uh, uh, you know, a baking machine. All of these are costs. So keep this in mind. And today we will continue talking a little bit more about costs uh, and you know, for the next few videos as well. So one thing before I continue is the difference between short run and long run. So when you're talking about producers' choices to produce and how much to produce and whether to produce or not produce at all, they have to be careful about, of whether they're operating in the short run or long run. So let's define what the difference is. In the short run, at least one of the factors that we talked about is kept constant. So the factors of production, we talked about labor, raw materials, uh, paying rent on, your, uh, on the land that you are producing on, all of those are inputs. So the difference between short and long run is that, that in the long run, all your inputs are variable. What we mean by variable is, and we will define that a lot more specifically in the next few videos, is that we can change those in the long run. But in the short run, there is at least one of those inputs which is kept fixed. Let's look at an example of space. When, you are, when you're operating a, a bakery in, in, a, you know, in a place, you cannot just double the size of the store. It takes time for you to either open up a different store or it takes time for you to buy land around where you are to expand your operations. But in the long run, you can make all those changes. All right, so keep this in mind that the difference between short run and long run is how long it takes for a producer to adjust their behavior in terms of their inputs. Let me ask you a question and pause about it, uh, you know, pause your video and think about it before you listen to my answer. How much time do you think it takes for a producer to go from short run to long run? So think about that. And the answer is that it depends on what you're producing. So if you are a street vendor uh, producing food, selling at a street corner, the amount of time it takes for you to double your production is probably a day at most, right? You can buy uh, the, you know, the, the cart and you can buy your inputs to produce food very easily. It doesn't take too much time for you to increase your uh, production capacity. But if you're somebody who's running a factory producing cars, for you, it takes a very long time for you to adjust from short run to long run because it takes much longer to build a huge new factory as opposed to buy a new cart and sell food on that. So the difference between short and long run is varied depending on what it is you're producing. Right, so always keep that in mind when we're talk, talking about costs uh, you know, in, in this chapter. All right, so three concepts that we're going to introduce you to in this video is the concept of total product, average product, and marginal product. So in this video, I will introduce you to the definitions, and I'll do a brief numerical example. In the next video, we will graph all of these three. So the next couple of videos are going to be very closely related to each other, so pay attention and maybe go back and forth between videos when you are understanding these concepts. So first one is the total product. Total product of any input in the whole production process is the relationship between that input and a particular output that you're producing, keeping all other inputs fixed. So what we mean by that is when you're looking at, again, going back to the example of running a bakery store, you're looking at how much more cakes you can produce if you hire more people keeping everything else constant. Everything else constant means you have fixed number of machines, you have fixed number of hours you can work, you have fixed number of inputs, your raw materials. So keeping everything else fixed, you're looking at the relationship between one input, the example I gave was the labor you're hiring, and output. You could look like the same relationship between raw materials and output, keeping everything else constant, in which case you would have kept labor constant. So it doesn't matter which input you pick, but you keep everything else constant and look at the relationship between that particular input and how much output they can produce. All right, so if we vary one input and keep all other inputs constant, that relationship is referred to as the total product. So looking at it numerically, it's the quantity you can produce is going to be a function of, we know it's a function of x1, x2, x3, all of those being different inputs, but we are saying it's a function of x1 keeping x2 constant. So a, this 
terminology here, the way we put the notation is this bar means we're keeping that constant. So we're keeping x2 and any other inputs that you have constant, and just looking at the relationship between x1 and quantity. So that's the total product. Now, moving forward, let's do a numerical example. So here, this is the same example we had uh, in the previous video. Uh, we have inputs, uh, two inputs, and how much output they can produce given all these combinations. If you're not, if you're a little confused on this, maybe go look at uh, the uh, previous video and come back to this. So now what we're saying is if we keep x2 to be fixed at 2, so all you can do is you can hire as many units of x1 you want, whatever x1 is in terms of inputs, but your x2 is fixed. So let's say if, if x1 is labor and x2 is capital, we're saying the number of machines that a baker has is fixed at 2, and all they can do if they want to produce more is hire more people. So all we're looking at is that column there. So if you have two machines, if you have one person, you'll produce three. If you have three people, you'll produce 15. All other combinations of inputs and output are not relevant. So that's what we mean by looking at the total product of x1. So when we're looking at this relationship, we're saying how is x1 going to affect the quantity, which is this whole grid here, keeping x2 to be fixed at 2. So that's what total product tells us. All right, so the next one is average product. Average product is just the, on average, how much can your inputs produce? Again, everything else is kept constant. We're still looking at the relationship between x1 and quantity, but what we're saying that here is, if we vary one input, which is x1 again, and keep everything else constant, how much, what is the overall production of that input on average? That's a total product is how much do they produce to in total. Average product is how much do, do each of those input, in terms of x1, produce on average. All right, so the average product of labor, let's say labor is what I'm looking at in terms of x1, is the total product divided by the total amount of input that you are looking at, which is L. So going back to the notation that we've seen many times, the average product is the function, uh, get, you know, it's, it's how much does, so the total quantity you produce uh, in terms of the average product is the how much does x1 contribute towards x uh, towards output keeping x2 constant divided by the total amount of x1 that you hire. So it's how much output does x1 produce keeping everything else constant divided by total number of uh, units you are going to be hiring. All right, so that's what average product means. Uh, now, the last one which is perhaps the most important and probably the most difficult to understand is the concept of marginal product. So before I explain that, let me just explain what the term marginal means. Marginal means an incremental change. So anytime you hear the word marginal, it just means a one unit change. So here we're looking at a one unit change in output produced by that one input, still x1, keeping everything else constant. All right, so it's the amount of uh, output that that one input contributes towards as you keep increasing that input by one. And I, I'm sure when I do the numerical example at the end of this video, all of this will make a lot more sense. So if a firm hires one more worker, how much does that output rise by? Average product just says that if you hire 10 people, on average they produce X. Marginal product says if I hire one more person, how much more will they produce for us? All right, so for example, if I hire one more worker, how much more extra output they produce? If I hire one more machine or I hire more, buy more land, how much extra do they produce? That's the key term in marginal, which did not exist in total, or average product. So in terms of the notation, change, you already know this means, uh, a delta means a change in something. So change in quantity is delta Q, change in L is delta labor, and the marginal product of labor is the change in Q divided by change in L. So assuming x1 is L, which is the input I'm letting change and everything else is constant, how much does output change by when you're increasing labor? All right, so hopefully you're comfortable with the concepts of total product, average product, and marginal product. Now let's do a numerical example. So here you have input one. I've deleted input two because that's kept fixed. Right? So that doesn't exist anymore. Now here, what we're saying is we're just looking at the relationship between x1 and all of these outputs. Right? So everything in the gray grid here is total output produced, changing x1, keeping x2 fixed. Right? So keep that in mind. So let's look at it one at a time. Total product, these two columns are, is just given to you. Right? If you hire two people, they'll produce 24. If, they, if you hire five people, they'll produce 55. If you hire one person, they'll produce 10. And again, if you hire zero people, they'll produce zero, keeping everything else constant. So the average product is just total product divided by the total number of inputs you're hiring. 
So for zero, it doesn't exist because zero divided by zero is not defined. 10 divided by one gives you 10, 40 divided by three gives you 13.3, and 55 divided by five gives you 11. So average product is just total product divided by the amount of, sorry, input that you're going to be hiring. The marginal product is the change in output divided by the change in input, which you know in this case is, is uh, labor, right? So now we're looking at how much does output change by when we hire one more worker. Output goes up by 10, the number of workers goes up by one, so the change is 10 divided by one, which is one, 10. Let's look at one more example. When we go from hiring one unit of labor to two units of labor, they are going from producing 10 units to 24 units. So what that means is, if you hire one person, they produce 10. If you hire the second person, they will combined produce 24. So the second person by themselves is contributing how much? That's right, 14. It's because change in Q, which is 10 to 24, that's 14, divided by change in X1, which is one, is going to give you 14. So you know it's very important you understand how we get 14. It's a change in output divided by the change in input. And I'll do one more example and we'll conclude. When we go from four to five units of labor, we output goes from 50 to 55. So four people produce 50, five people produce 55. So what we're trying to do with marginal product is to ask how much does the fifth person contribute? And the answer is change in Q, which is 50, uh, 55 minus 50, divided by change in L, which is one, and the answer you get is five. All right, so work through this example, work through all the scenarios and you know, average product is easy. Marginal product perhaps is the only thing that's a little tricky uh, you know, in, this, in this video, uh, but it's very important. When we start graphing these three uh, terms, it's gonna be very complicated if you do not understand the concept of marginal product. All right, so make sure you understand these uh, three concepts in relation to the, uh, in relation to, uh, the production function, which tells you the relationship between uh, the amount of inputs you're hiring and the amount of outputs that you get, uh, the quantity of output that you get from it. And in today's video, we looked at total product, average product, and the most important one, which is marginal product, and make sure you understand what they mean and how you can work with those in numbers. And in the next video, we'll talk about how you graph them. All right, so see you then.